What's up everyone, Michael here with an impressive view of Senran Kagura Shinobi vs. PC Edition, by the way. It says Proof of Life down there. That's probably part of the title, so I may as well say it, but I don't actually know. If you look it up, it's just Senran Kagura Shinobi vs. You'll find it. Anyways, <laughs> also link in the description. Now, there is a little bit of a disclosure warning I want to put with this, or rather a warning, I guess, not really disclosure. Senran Kagura is a series that has quite a bit of fan service. It is a game to where, you know, your character's clothes will literally rip off, so... I just want to put out a warning that there is quite a bit of fan service in this game, it may not be safe for work, and it doesn't necessarily fit the theme of my channel too much. Now, there's going to be a few games that release, or rather that I release videos on on my channel that are going to be more in a fan servicey thing, just because I happen to get a few review keys and play a few games that happen to be fan servicey, and they're actually quite good. Sinran Kagura is actually really, really good. Like, not absolutely amazing must-play game, but it is quite surprising because the San Ran Kagura game has always been kind of a lackluster third person action game in my opinion but this one is actually really really good so San Ran Kagura Shinobi Versus is essentially a one versus all kind of game I like to call them to where you play as a character and it's a hack and slash game third person and you're going to be going through and just mowing down a bunch of smaller enemies but the main draw of the game is the bosses now there's several unique characters in the game to which you can play and play against and this actually introduces a lot of kind of fighting game mechanics to where you're going to be you know headed on one on one or one on two or two on three whatever and you're going to be fighting these other characters that have you know just as much or more power than you and it is very very intense and very very exciting to play and i enjoy it quite a ton but real quick, since this is a port, I do want to talk about the port a little bit real quick and the settings. I'll go ahead and go into the settings first. Let's go ahead and look at sound. I turned up the music because the music for this game is awesome. Talk about that later. And then I turned on the voices because the voices are annoying. Once again, talk about it later. Make your camera. You can invert the camera if you wish to do so. I would like to see a camera distance option, which I've seen in a few PSP ports. Because this was on originally on the Vita, which was a portable console, which means that the camera is a little bit close for my feeling although it's pretty good in this game i think they did zoom it out for the pc edition but i would like to be able to zoom it out farther or maybe a setting to do that maybe a key binding for it you can rebind everything by the way which is actually quite nice so you're able to you know rebind anything you can't double rebind or double bind so you couldn't have w as move up and camera up but I don't know why you'd want to do that. This isn't a game where I necessarily want double binding anyways. And you can also rebind the gamepad. One thing that you can't rebind is the function keys, I believe. For There's a few things in the game, like screenshots. There's a button for that that actually doesn't display in the game. Or maybe that's just software I'm running. I don't actually know, so ignore that bit. But I wasn't able to put the function keys in here. And then the mouse looking, you can't rebind either, but that's kind of to be expected. Now, this is where the port kind of comes into play in its problems. You'll notice there's display resolutions. It's stuck at 16 by nine, it looks like. So you're gonna be stuck at your 16 by nine resolution, unless some of these aren't. And you know, you'll obviously see that, but you know, it, it looks like it is. I don't actually know what 1440 by, oh, I guess, maybe. So maybe it does have other resolutions, I don't know. No, those are 16 by nine. Anyways, so yeah, it's stuck by 16 by nine. It just does black borders, I would assume. I run an eight, a 1080 monitor so I don't notice it so it's perfectly fine for me and the game does run at 60 FPS which is nice but I believe it is frame capped and then you have borderless windowed windowed and full screen which is always nice to see I had some issues with full screen when I first got the game because driver issues I think there's a little cutscene when you start up the game it's like this anime cutscene it has various problems depending on what driver I'm using and I don't know what that is about but it's Pretty much just ignorable because it's only the intro cutscene thing and you can just skip it anyways and it doesn't really add anything to the game either. It's just cool to look at and it has a great soundtrack to it. Then you get your language, so you have English and Japanese. All the voice acting is going to be in Japanese no matter what you do. And so this is really just the text and it does have subtitles. So if you want to read what you know people are saying, then you have English. There you go. Then you have the torn clothes scenes, transformation scenes, and ninja art scenes. Now these are the three most important settings in the game because there's little scenes that play when clothing tears, which happens a lot, so I have this off. And then you have transformation scenes and ninja art scenes. When you first start playing this game, have these two on, the transformation and ninja arts, because it adds a little bit of personality to the characters and the game. But after you've seen them a few times, you can skip the cutscenes, but I just turn them off because they break the flow of the game. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, I would like to see some graphic options, like maybe, you know, at least anti-aliasing or something like that. There's none of that in this game. The game seems to apply anti-aliasing by default, and so that is a thing. You can override it with your graphics driver, but, you know, there's no settings for, like, textures or anything like that. I wasn't expecting it, and the game runs fantastic, 
So it's not that big of a deal, but I would like to see it regardless. Anyways, let's go ahead and go into the game and look at some gameplay. All right, now we are in game. And you can see I am running around as a schoolgirl. looks like. Yes, that is a thing. I said this game has fan service, so get over it. So this game kind of plays in a weird style. You have a bunch of different playable characters to where, you know, you actually can pick any of them. You can see some of the characters in here. Now, there are different schools. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and actually go into the game so that, you know, you're not plus on there. This is kind of a main hub area, by the way. You have various things. You can open up the menu and see what everything is, and you can also walk around and do whatever you want. And you can see down here, this is change schools thing. One thing that is annoying to change to all the characters, you actually have to change schools, and this is actually tied to the mission system we're going to go into. So there are three kind of mission types. There's training field, which is just your tutorial stuff. So you can go in here, basic free training and whatever. So free training is actually just going to be, you know, it sets you up with a bunch of enemies and then you can do whatever. And then you get your main story, which is going to be the Shinobi Girls School, which actually has a storyline for each school. And I've actually played through all of them, so I know about that. And then you get the Shinobi Girls Heart. Now this is going to be mission specific to each character. And I'll talk a little bit more about them in the future of the video. Let's go ahead and look at Shinobi Girls School, and I'll talk about the actual gameplay mechanics. We're going to go ahead and play on hard because I am super, super overleveled for this. So let's just go for it. Now here's the story bits if you're interested in how the story goes on. You know, they talk about stuff. You have the character standing there, it has the dialogue down there, and it is fully voice acted, but it's all in Japanese. So... There's a thing, let's go ahead and just skip that real quick. The loading times for me are a little bit long, that's why I've been kind of fading them in and out. The cutscene, like, in between the story bits to the actual gameplay isn't long, and when you're just doing uh, training missions, it loads up extremely fast, and so you don't actually have to worry about your loading screen that much, but when it's loading story, it takes a long time for some reason, like, it takes up to like 20 seconds sometimes, which is kind of ridiculous. I think that's mostly to do with my system, like maybe I need to defrag the game or something like that. I'm waiting for some computer upgrades to do that, but regardless. Anyway, so here we are in the game. You can see I am running around and I am slashing up the weaker enemies. Now, this is one of the three mission types that are in the game. So this is the one to where, you know, you're just going to fight a bunch of weaker style enemies and you're going to be using, you know, everything you can to just defeat them. Once you defeat them all, you're done. Then there are also other ones to where you'll just be put up straight against the boss, and then there's going to be the mixture levels that put you up against a bunch of smaller enemies, and then you kind of fight a boss at the end, which are actually the levels I like the most because they kind of ramp up. I'll talk a little bit about that later. I'm going to try to find a mission that does that. I believe Chapter 4 has some, so we'll do that one real quick. Anyway, so here we are in the game, and you can see it is very, very fast-paced. So you get your kind of heavy attack, and you get your light attacks, so, you know, the quick attacks are your heavy, and you can combine them to actually do different ones. So you can throw enemies into the air, you can dodge towards them, and it actually does different combos depending on how you end up attacking enemies. So if I just jump in the air and use my attack, I can actually get this kind of slash down move, and then I can smash downwards. But if I end up using a combo to throw them into the game, or into the air, I can actually use the game's kind of dodge mechanic to follow them up into the air. Now, additionally, you also have a dodge mechanic, and if you hold down the dodge button, you can actually run, which you don't actually use it that much in the game. I used it once to kind of get from area to area on some of the larger levels that are combined to where you got to run to the boss and stuff like that. It adds a nice feeling of exploration, but you don't necessarily use it too much, but it is there. You can probably use it to kind of like dodge enemies and stuff like that as well. And then you also have a block mechanic, so you can end up blocking enemies. Now, the combos are not exactly advanced. There's a, only a few combos, so if I hit the back button here, you can actually see these are all my combos. Now, for this character, I ended up starting with this character because I have all the combos unlocked. And you'd be looking at this and be like, oh yeah, that's fairly basic, and so you get a few. So I have, you know, my kind of power attack could be charged and things like that, but it's not necessarily advanced, and every character is like that. However, there are 24 freaking characters in this game. At least I think that's right. I might have miscounted. I think there's 24. I counted before this video started, so if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But it's some ridiculous number. Each character has different combos to them. The main draw, however, is each character doesn't only use a different weapon, but they also have three transformations. So you actually have, you know, different combos depending on the transformation you're in. And so there's one that's called the Frantic Mode which will actually tear your character's clothes, and then you run around and you attack faster. It actually changes up all of your combos. And then there's also the Shinobi version, which I'm going to show that in the next mission, because I kind of finished that one pretty quick, because I'm overleveled and just completely dominated. And I'm going to be playing on hard when I'm playing on this character, just because I can. Actually, maybe I should switch up characters. No, I want to show off this character more, because I like it. This is probably my favorite character out of all of them. It's the very first character you play, which is kind of funny. I, I actually like all of the characters 
for the most part. They're actually quite enjoyable. I'll talk about story in a little bit after we get this done. Anyways, I'm going to skip this loading screen real quick if it's not going to take too long. Nope, that didn't take too long. All right. So yeah, it's only when I'm loading into story sections that's taking forever. I think that has to do with my system specifically. I probably need to defrag the game again because I did have to reinstall it before this video. So that's probably on my end. Anyways, I'm going to go to chapter four and actually go to her mission. Yes, I'm going to right away skip the story bit because I don't want to spoil anything because there are spoilers. So I'm just tapping the start button. Start, 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 start. Yes, yes. It gives you hints in the loading screens as well. So, you know, skipping the things is actually quite quick, but I wish there was an option when you were starting up a mission to just skip it right away. So there was about my loading screen time if I just immediately skipped the cutscene. So I guess it's not that long. I might have complained out of nowhere. Here's one of the kind of hybrid missions where you got to run to your mission. So you're able to like run and stuff like that. So here we are fighting a bunch of little ones. So I'm going to go ahead and show off some of the transformations. And so one of the transformations is your frantic mode. So if I end up hitting my block and then I go into and it literally rips your character's clothes off. Now, if you had the cutscenes on, then it would actually show a scene. But you can see I'm actually attacking a lot faster and I have different moves entirely. Now, if I hit the back button, you'll notice they're fairly similar, though. And so the game kind of keeps this theme of, you know, kind of the same button presses are going to end up doing the same sort of moves but they're gonna be different in the way that they function. And some characters are more dramatic than others. Now I'm showing this one because this one is fairly basic in the way that it changes. As in this character starts using kicks and they're a lot faster and it does more hits. However, when you're in frantic mode, you actually take more damage. Now the other mode is the shinobi mode, which since I'm in frantic, fanatic, ugh, fanatic mode, it doesn't actually show that. So I'm gonna end up having to get to the boss. I believe I need to fill up my ninja art energy. But when you're in shinobi mode, you're actually able to use shinobi arts and ninja arts. I believe I can use them now as well. So if I end up using this, it'll actually use one of the abilities and the speed and stuff like that changes if you're in frantic mode. Now, since I'm in frantic mode, I can't actually go into shinobi mode because you can only switch into one mode, which is actually one of the complaints I have about the gameplay in this game. Once you transform, you're kind of stuck into one mode, which is kind of frustrating. And so now, I, so now that I'm frantic, I can use my special abilities, which are going to be completely dominating. So I can be like, boom, 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 boom. There goes everything. And this actually makes a lot of the game move fast. So you get a heavy one and you get a light one for each character. Each character has two different moves. And then you also have an ultimate move, which you can only use when you're on low health, which I don't think I'm ever going to get into low health on this game because I am just going to completely dominate everything. So that's the thing. But regardless, you have three kind of special moves that you can do, and you do actually have to unlock them through leveling, which is going to run into another one of the complaints. You saw after I completed that last level that it actually had like a little leveling segment where it's like, yeah, you leveled up and you got points. Yeah, the thing is that actually unlocks your moves and stuff like that. Now you unlock, you start the game with the, you know, transformations and you have the, whatchamacallit, calls it, the transformations right off the bat. And so that's not actually a thing. You get to do have the uh, transformation stuff right from the get go. But it does lock your combos, and so you're stuck with when you start a new character, and I'll actually show one of the characters I don't actually have a lot of unlocks for in a bit to kind of show you what I'm talking about. But you'll start with like a three hit basic combo, your heavy attack, and an air combo, and that's all you'll get. And to level up, you know, it's going to take a few missions to actually unlock everything and get, you know, whatever you need, which is annoying to say the least. You're going to be having, you know, some boring times if you end up playing through the story because the story actually goes into, you know, switching up the characters a lot, which I actually want to praise it for. It does a lot of switching up the characters and keeping it fresh, which is kind of nice. But at the same time, did I just win? I just won without it transforming. Wow. Normally boss characters transform. I need to switch characters so I can actually show you guys a proper boss battle. Wow. Dominated. So this game can be quite easy at times. That is another complaint about it. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But when you're following the main story, it switches up characters a lot, which is nice because it keeps it fresh. But at the same time, if you're like me and just sped through the story to get a review done, you kind of get bored of just having a three hit combo until you go back and replay characters and stuff like that, which is a little bit frustrating. I wish they would have done a little bit more to where you can end up playing other characters. I feel like it wasn't designed for you to rush through the storyline because there are two kind of storylines. Now, this is where I want to talk about the story a little bit. So I'm going to go into here real quick. I'm going to end up switching schools and showing off other characters in a second. But you can see you get the Shinobi Code, which is the main story. And this is going to be linear. And this is where it switches off characters. Now, after you beat a level, you can actually play as any character. And then you have the Shinobi Girl's Heart. And this is actually where you have character-specific missions to where, you know, only that character can play through them. And these have different types of storylines. Now, the main storyline is kind of a mixed bag. And I necessarily don't want to say I don't like it, 
but at the same time, I don't like it because it's kind of this weird mixture of, I don't know, it's very much, this part's comical, and then it goes immediately into really, really serious stuff, but at the same time, the reason that serious stuff happened was because of the comedy bits, and so it kind of has this weird feel that this is kind of popular in Japanese games in general, but like it has this weird feeling to where a lot of it just feels like it doesn't matter and ultimately it just stopped caring about a lot of the game, especially its serious bits, because I enjoy the game when it's being ridiculous and fun. By the way, you can see different schools actually have different lobbies. You can go around and talk to the characters and be like, hi, yay, skip, skip, skip. Don't read that if you don't want spoilers. I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus, I, I talked to her again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for people who read that and saw spoilers. It probably didn't have anything. It said something about guessing school, which is another one of the schools. Anyways. So yeah, it does, it, it just has a weird feeling to it a bit, and I don't, I don't know if I necessarily like that too much, because, you know, when it's being ridiculous, that's awesome, and that's all the Shinobi Girl's Heart one is. So if I go into one of these character missions, I'm not going to, because I don't want to spoil things for people, but those ones are ridiculous, and they're just like, completely insane, like there's one to where a character just wants to be friends with everyone, and they're like, hey, I need to go make friends, and so they go around beating up characters and trying to make friends, which is pretty awesome. I think I want to play Shiki, because she's really cool. I like her. I probably should have played on hard mode. Whoops. Anyways, I'm going to skip forward since I'm playing on hard mode real quick. I'm, I need to stop wasting time. Alright, I'm back. I restarted the mission on hard. Anyways, the girl's heart one is pretty ridiculous. So it has one where they're trying to make friends. There's another one to where they're trying to improve a rice cake recipe. And so they're going around beating up characters for these ridiculous reasons. And just with ridiculous storylines. And it's just, it's awesome. And the characters just kind of talk during the battle. And they're like, oh, well, you could try this as they're, you know, punching you in the face with a giant sword. It's... It's a little bit ridiculous, and I enjoy that aspect of it, because I feel like this game is the best when it's ridiculous, because the gameplay is ridiculous, like just outright insane. It is ludicrous for how fast the game gets, for how crazy the game is. Here's a Shinobi transformation, so I turn into a move, and you actually get different moves. You can actually see how the Shinobi moves are. The Shinobi probably has the more intricate ones, and I'm playing a different character, and so they have different moves and stuff like that. And when they switch over, they actually change some of their moves from being physical to ranged and stuff like that. And I'm doing terrible on here. I need to use a Limit Break, which is actually another ability in the game to where you're able to kind of knock out enemies. So if you're having problems, you know, escaping, you can use a Limit Break to kind of break away their combo and stuff like that. And I'm just getting my butt kicked because I switched to hard on a character that I'm not leveled up on. So that's a thing. I might actually lose, but I picked up a health pickup. There are pickups, by the way. When you defeat random enemies or break boxes, you'll end up being able to pick up, you know, different types of power-ups and things. There was a special ability, and you also see what I'm talking about with the camera here, where the camera's frustrating. Anyways, back onto the story stuff. So the, the story is fun when it's ridiculous, and it's just... The girl heart ones are just really ridiculous reasons for the girls to be fighting, like, you know, finding out a re cake recipe, or maybe somebody needs a new cell phone part, and somebody supposedly has one, so they go and fight them. It's... It's, it's ridiculous, and I like that. But the main story has this problem to where it tries to be a little bit too serious, Oh, here I can uh, use my ultimate ability because I got really low health. So, I just won that battle. That got pretty close. You have to unlock the ultimate ability, by the way, through like story play. So you don't just have it right away, but that was actually pretty cool. I'd never seen hers. And it ripped off all her clothes because of course it did. Sorry for the fan service. I'll try skipping through it. But the main story just kind of feels like it's constantly trying to come up with reasons for the characters to fight. And if it was just completely ridiculous all the time, it would be fine. But when it tries to be serious, it just, it feels like it's trying too hard. And that's really all the game's story is. It's just more reasons for all the characters to end up fighting each other. And that, that just bothered me a lot. And it also does a lot of things to where, you know, I'll completely dominate a battle or I'll just barely make it. And like when I completely dominate, it's like, oh, that was a tough battle. I barely made it and stuff like that. And then like the other one will be like, oh, well, you know, this was an easy battle, even though my character is just completely torn to bits. Here's more story bit. When you're playing the main story, it just kind of skips through all the missions. I think it's going to start me off with the character I selected. Yeah, it is. So I'm actually going to go switch characters real quick, but I may as well talk about the other mechanics. Anyways, that was my problems with the story. The story is not bad. I don't want to say it's bad because it's not. It, it is enjoyable and the serious moments are actually kind of interesting. It plays around with a lot of darker themes that I didn't expect it to. So that was quite interesting to see, but at the same time, after a while, I just kind of stopped caring about the story too much because I liked the game when it's being ridiculous and I wasn't expecting a serious experience when I was playing, 
and so I wasn't necessarily looking for it. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the customization. Now you'll notice that these characters are in different outfits. Like when you start the game, all the characters are in the same kind of school uniform depending on the school that they're in. So this one has that uniform, but this character you'll notice is different. Now I wish it would change the characters in the lobbies outfits too, but you actually have a dressing room to where you can dress up your character. This gets way into the fan service stuff, and I honestly haven't played with it that much because I don't care. I have a ton of stuff unlocked just because it's unlockable, so I unlock everything. I'll talk about that when we go to the shop. But yeah, ultimately, I just kind of went to their ultimate outfit, and so there's an alternate outfit that you can unlock, and then there's also the default outfit that you have. Um, what, what school is this? Is this guessing? This is guessing. One second. So there's the guessing uniform. So this is the character uniform that you would start out on. Through the story, you end up unlocking a alternate outfit and so I just have all the characters in their alternate outfits. Maybe I didn't switch it for all of these characters. Maybe I can switch that real quick. Uh, this one? Midori? Yeah, I switched her character outfit. Okay, so I don't know why because in the first area they were switched outfits, but in this one they're not. I don't know if that's a bug or something. Maybe it is based on the chapter that you just played or something. I don't know. Regardless, go into the dressing room. So you have tons of outfits and stuff like that. So you can unlock these through the character shop. And you can see, you know, you can switch into uniforms with a sweater, or I can wear gym clothes, or something along this one. And you can actually unlock the other character outfits too, so I can wear the wrong school uniform and stuff like that as well. So that is a thing. What was this character, Minori? Yes, that was Minori. Alright. And then you can also switch out the outfits for, like, the Shinobi and stuff like that. So you get your Minori's outfit, you get, you know, you can switch to the other character's outfits, or you can be a cheerleader. Wear a naughty apron, which I'm not going to turn around for obvious reasons. You can be a magic girl, which actually fits this character. Now, the main problem I haven't actually messed with this kind of customization in general is one way that I kind of look at character customization is I want to personify that character. And so there will be a certain outfit that will be like, oh yeah, this one looks really, really cool with this character because it fits their personality. This game is a little bit limited on that. As in, there's a few that kind of match characters' personality, but like this character is very, very much, you know, very play heavy. They always want to be playing. They're kind of, you know, very, very fun. And they just, you know, their entire character is around that element. You can see their default outfit is very colorful and very, very fun. And that is that character in a nutshell. A lot of the outfits are not going to fit that character. And there's some that just don't at all like the sexy maid outfit. Like, that's just there for fan service. And that's okay for people who like it, but at the same time, it doesn't really fit any of the characters in my opinion. And so I'm trying to look for outfits that kind of fit the character in general, and a lot of them don't. And that's kind of unfortunate, and that's why I haven't really played around with it. And honestly, I don't really care for this. There's too many characters to really go into it. You can also switch up the underwear and stuff like that. There's a whole lottery system for it. We'll check in a second. You can also change outfit for the hairstyle or whatever. So I don't have a lot of these unlocked because I've just been unlocking things in order. But you can change up the hairstyles and everything. If you want everyone with the hair, same hairstyle, let's say you have a ponytail fetish. There you go. You can do that. You can also add accessories, which allow you to put on like cat ears and stuff. Once again, don't have very many of them unlocked because I haven't unlocked them yet. Anyways, let's go ahead and look over at the shop. You can also go to the library, which is going to be where you're going to be able to view some of your unlockable so videos, music, voices, and things. So that's a thing. Boom, boom, boom. One second. Going to walk over. There's also online multiplayer. I should talk about this real quick. I haven't actually played it, but there is online multiplayer. That was... That was... <laughs> that's all I have to say for that, because I haven't been able to find a game, and I don't have any friends that have this game, and so... That's what that is, but apparently it's extremely unbalanced, which is why nobody plays it on PC and everything like that. Anyway, so here we are in the shop. This is where you can unlock all of your stuff. You'll notice I have pretty much everything unlocked for the outfits, just because that's what I unlocked first. And then you have lingerie, so you can unlock different um, underwears. Once again, have all that unlocked. This is the extra stuff, so these are like accessories, so you get like new hairstyles and things like that. Now, the game does come with a bunch of DLC, or at least my game did. I did get a review code for this game. You also unlock extra accessory slots here. I don't know if that's in the default game, I think it is, and so I think the PC version comes with all the DLC, which includes two extra characters and stuff like that. Um, if it doesn't, I'm sorry, that's, it just did with my game, that's all I know. And then you get the um, pictures from the uh, storyline stuff, so if you want those for basically fan service. And then you also have the music unlocks as well. Now another interesting thing is you have the lingerie laundry lottery, which is something I haven't really played with, but it is an interesting mechanic. The more money you put in, the higher the chances you will get lingerie from it. That's that's pretty much it. So you can go to 100% or 98% or whatever, and then you roll it, 
and it gives you a, a random kind of quality and then within that quality you will get a random lingerie set. And so it'll be like, oh, you got these black undies. There you go. And it has this really nice animation towards like, yay, you got some purple boxers. I don't, I don't really know. I haven't really played with it because I don't care. Like once again, the fan servicey bit to this game, I, I don't mind it. It's there to be there and it does play into the aesthetic. But once again, I, I'm not the type of person that's really into that audience. And so there you go. There's my input on that. Let's play as this character for a little bit and then I'll kind of go into a conclusion as I'm talking about it. Now, a few more complaints about the performance and things like that. Let's go ahead and talk about that because that is kind of important for a lot of people. Now, performance for me has been stellar. It has actually performed really, really well, and I would say it's a very well-optimized PC port. However, if you're on very low-end hardware, or maybe your CPU limited and things like that, like you're running on a really old CPU, it might have some trouble running, and the game does kind of rely on a constant frame rate. I was able to drop my frame rate by running a few programs in the background, because I was very curious on... I'm very curious on Vita ports in general, because I've been playing other P like Vita ports. If you pay attention to my channel, over the next month, you'll notice that quite a bit, is that I've been playing a few Vita ports, and so I'm very, very much interested in the technical side of that. And it seems like, you know, a lot of the games are going to be reliant on frame light for game speed, and this game is no exception, so it seems to be locked at 60 FPS, and that seems to be where you want to run the game. There are a few animations that are kind of locked at 30 FPS as well, like in the lobby, I don't know if it'll show up in the video very well because it's YouTube and all of that. But you'll notice that some of the animations kind of look weird according to like, including the physics and stuff like that for like the brass and stuff like that. There is physics in this game. I didn't actually mention it. The physics actually look quite nice as well. Like there's a little bit of clipping on cloth and stuff like that. And so you can notice that the skirt kind of gets a little bit of clipping, but it actually looks quite nice and it actually runs extremely flawlessly, which is what I enjoy the most. But as for like glitches and stuff, there's a few problems with like the animations like in the lobby. It's like stuck at like 30 FPS animations for some reason. And that's just, you know, they didn't make high quality animations for that section, which isn't what matters. You know, obviously the this gameplay stuff is what really, really matters. And you can also see this character's weapon is a freaking bucket. <laughs> this character's amazing. So yes, they literally use a bucket. There's another character that uses a stuffed rabbit and stuff like that. It's this game gets ridiculous with its weapons. There's also a character with giant gauntlets, and there's a character that uses a giant scythe, which I was playing a little bit earlier. And then there's a character that uses a giant freaking cleaver and a spear. And, you know, the weapons are very varied, and I do enjoy that part. Anyways, back on to performance and stuff like that. It, it runs well, and outside of those small animation issues, like when the game slows down, it also has this problem to where... It kind of has that 30 FPS animation as well, and it's, it's just a little bit jarring, but it's not really a big deal. The only gameplay issue I've found is that every once in a while with certain enemies that teleport and stuff like that, they'll have like a visual glitch to where the character will begin flashing for no apparent reason. And it's pretty rare that it happens, and once again, it seems to be an issue with drivers, because when I switched drivers recently, it seemed to fix the issue completely which is kind of nice, but every once in a while I'll switch drivers again and then it'll be back to not working. And I don't know why that is, and I couldn't tell you on a technical level because I don't actually know why the engine works. But aside from that, the game runs flawlessly. Like I've had no problems, the game's extremely responsive and extremely fun to play. One thing about this character, I'll talk about real quick since I'm playing it, is that this character actually has an ability to where they can have candy put into their bucket and then they're able to charge up their candy. Now in hard mode, enemies are actually extremely brutal and so I'm getting my butt kicked like crazy. But I'm able to charge up my candy and then use it as a beam. So I can be like, boom, haha, -ha, I charged up that candy and then I can use it to put in another candy. Now let's go ahead and do a Shinobi transformation. I forgot I haven't done that yet, so I'll go. Well, no, I have, I did with Shiki, so I guess it doesn't matter. I am just, oh my God, leave me alone, Jesus Christ. Some of the AI is absolutely brutal. You can also lock on to enemies as well. And so if I hit the up arrow, now lock on is kind of frustrating to use because it locks onto your closest target, which means when you're in a group of large enemies and you want to focus onto the main boss, then it can actually be quite difficult. You have to get like point blank to actually do it. Okay, they transformed. I need to transform. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm stunned. Um, let me, uh, yeah, I transformed. So I have my abilities now, but I'm kind of waiting for a moment to attack. There we go. I missed because I got attacked while I was kind of charging up my attack. Cool, I am not playing well. Anyways, yeah, so performance is pretty good. I just wish there were a few graphics options and things like that. Now let's talk about kind of like my conclusion and game balance and stuff like that. Boom, boom, boom. Can I please kill you now? There we go. I killed her. Sweet. 
I could have gone through that battle a lot quicker by transforming and just using my ninja arts right away, and I understand that, but I like playing it like, you know, just trying to fight away through it. Anyways, on to conclusion. The balance for characters are a little bit off. That is a thing that's kind of there. And you can see the characters mismatch from the story because I actually selected a specific character. Don't worry, when you're playing the story, it forces you to play a specific character so the story makes sense. But after you complete it, you can play as any character you want, like I mentioned. And so that's just a little oversight I wanted to make sure to point out real quick. Um, but yeah, so character balance seems to be all over the place. The game is not focused on being competitive or anything like that. So there's certain characters that feel extremely powerful in comparison to other characters. And that may just be because of my playstyle. Like, every character is very, very different in the way that they play. Some are very, very fast. Some are more slow and methodical. Other ones are going to be more, you know, about charging and planning your attacks. To where others are going to be literally just, you know, jump pounce them with your butt. I'm going to go ahead and go show that character because I've been talking about it and I want to show it because it's hilariously ridiculous. But the game has a few balance issues, I would say. Like, some characters are just outright more powerful in both stats and the kind of moves that they have. Also, there's other schools. I won't show all of them, so I won't spoil it. So there is that kind of issue. So if you're looking at this for a competitive multiplayer standpoint, also, I wasn't able to find multiplayer games, so you probably shouldn't. So, you know, get this game for the single player aspect. Maybe you have a friend that will also pick it up and you can play like 1v1. But the multiplayer modes don't really sound that interesting either. So there's a thing. Um, let's do chapter two, I guess. And I need to play him. Hibari. This is the other character that I played quite a bit, so... Yeah. I, I like her because she's ridiculous. She's the character that just wanted to be everyone's friend, but then she beated them up. So, that's a thing. But ultimately, like, I enjoy all of the characters. Like, the characters are well... well designed in some aspects. The character, like, personalities are actually quite interesting, as in, they're not super in-depth. You're not gonna get, like, oh my god, Final Fantasy type characters, but you are gonna get you know, a nice personality for each character. There's no kind of character development throughout the game. Well, there is a little bit, but like, it's very, very minor. And it's it's really just kind of like, oh, I've grown up now, haha. -ha, but they're still like, they're fun character. And so you can see this character just uses, not necessarily their fists, but their palm. They just kind of swag enemies. And you can also do this. And hold on one second, there we go. But pounds, <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just ridiculously at like awesome. I just like that ability for no reason. Each character is very, very unique, and their fighting style and weapons fit their character's personality, and they're all interesting in some way, which is a huge plus to the game, and it actually adds to the kind of story, which is also kind of like why I'm disappointed that I don't enjoy the story as much as I want to. The story isn't anything stellar. I do enjoy the girl heart missions, which is the character-specific ones, because it, it's able to display more of the character's personality, and that's kind of what they're there for, and they're just ridiculous and fun, and that's what I enjoy. Gameplay-wise, though, I enjoy this game a ton. It is freaking awesome. As in, the gameplay is very, very smooth. It plays extremely well. It runs extremely well. And it just feels extremely responsive. I never feel like some move that I did was out of my control. There is maybe one or two instances in the levels that I played to where enemies will end up popping up out of the ground. But the thing is, it does display that it's going to happen. It just makes a small ground movement, but it doesn't give you very much time. And so while it feels unfair at first, later on you'll realize, oh, it actually gives these indicators and I can dodge these. Character attacks also have indicators, so, you know, when you're playing against other characters, you may fight them for the first time and be like, oh, well, that's unfair. But after playing against them enough, you'll be like, oh, well, when they do this movement, they're going to do this attack. Or when they slide over this way, they're going to be able to do this attack. Or when they knock me into the air, I need to do this to avoid this. And each character kind of has this different dynamic that's actually really, really interesting. And that's what's kept me playing the game, is the interesting dynamic and the amount of characters. Leveling sucks, because, you know, it locks you off of content that I, you know, think would have been more enjoyable, but I also understand it from a gameplay standpoint, like, it adds stats and stuff like that, and it also adds combos, and it keeps character interesting for longer than I think it normally would have. Holy crap, they just pounded me into a wall. I'm getting stuck into this wall. Let's limit break out of that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna float over here. There we go. Do a little Sonic Dash thing that we got in here. I like this character just because they're ridiculous. So, ultimately, like, I enjoy the game a ton. Do I recommend it to people? Yeah, like, for people who enjoy, like, action games and stuff like that, especially games of this kind of subgenre to where, you know, it's the one versus all or the kind of boss battle. See, I used, I defeated that game or defeated that battle without ever 
um, using a transformation, which is kind of unfortunate because the game is a little bit easy. That is another complaint I will make about the game in my conclusion, is that the game has some moments to where it's just way too easy, which is unfortunate because I'm on hard mode right now. I don't know if there's a very hard mode. I really hope there is, and then maybe it unlocks after I complete the last story because I haven't quite finished the last story that I'm on, and maybe I have to complete them on hard. Maybe it unlocks after you do something, or maybe you have to get characters to a different level, but there's tons of unlockables in this game. You know, As you saw, I had a bunch of stuff unlocked, but you can actually level up characters and you unlock other outfits and things like that through that situation as well. And so the game just has a lot of content, like with all the different characters and all the different missions, it has that, you know, just a sheer load of content that you can play through. And if you enjoy the game enough, you know, you'll probably end up playing through all of it. I will say that it can get repetitive, especially when you don't have characters leveled and you don't have all the combos. But once again, like even when it got repetitive, I just take a break for a little bit and come back and I'm still having fun just because of how fast and fluid the game plays. Now, the final kind of nail in the coffin for some people, though, is going to be the fan service and the kind of character style. It is very much anime-inspired sort of stuff, you know, it is very Japan, as some people would say. And the character voices can be a little bit annoying and take a little bit to get used to. Now, you can't just turn them off by turning the, you know, voice volume off, so that's not really a complaint you can have, because you can just turn it off. But then you won't have voice acting, and I feel like the voices do add a bit to the personalities of the characters. And the fan service is something that might throw a lot of people off of the game as well. But ultimately, I found it ignorable and very, very enjoyable. Like, the fan- not the fan service bit, I think the fan service is actually annoying. Now, one thing about the kind of gameplay of it is, I'm glad they introduced one mechanic to where, you know, you can turn off the cutscenes, but I'll end up turning them on right now. You can turn these on and off whenever you want, so I'll go ahead and turn these on. And then, yes, apply changes. Now, when I change it to Transform, or Shinobi form, you get these cutscenes. These are what happens. So, this will happen for both your character and the enemy character. But you'll kind of get this fan servicey thing where there's a butt in your face. And I'm really close to my monitor, so that was a little bit awkward. But then it plays that, and it just randomly happens throughout combat. Now, if I, you know, use a Shinobi art, it also does a little cutscene as well. And these just break up the flow of the combat quite a bit, and they're quite annoying. But they do add a bit of personality, so as you can see, it's like, yay, I'm on my thing now, instead of just, if I turn this off, go to the settings, turn them off, because I don't like them, especially torn scene one, they're just, they happen all the time, and it just, you know, does it automatically. I, I prefer that when I'm just playing, but that is the thing that happens. So yeah, ultimately, I recommend this game. Like, I actually do. For people who like action games and don't mind the fan service, it's actually an incredibly fun game, and I didn't expect that from the Sanran Kagura series like I knew they were enjoyable and I knew they were a little bit ridiculous but this one is just it's a lot more than I expected to play from this game I, I you know had it as a review key and I saw it and I'm like you know what sure I'll try it because I played the games in the past and I played another game that's actually running on the same engine and I, I enjoyed it but it was lacking in content and then I played this one I wasn't expecting much because of that and then what I was introduced to was a ton of content and a really fast and fluid, really, really fun kind of gameplay style that I really, really enjoy. Also, you can hold up and taunt, so this character kind of smacks their butt and does a little bunny or taunt and stuff like that. They all have, they just, there's a lot of personality to each of the characters. So yeah, ultimately, I recommend it. May not be for everyone because of all the fan service and stuff like that. And yeah, so it's, it's a good game. Good, solid recommendation for me. And obviously, I recommend the PC version over the Vita port because the Vita's a Vita. That's that's a thing. Boom! I just turned into a giant girl and smashed her with my butt. So I'm gonna end the video there. This has been Michael with Shin... Uh, Sin Kano... Oh, God. Let me take a second. I'm sorry, I'm smiling because I didn't know that was an ability of smashing them with her butt like that. And I, when you're in their normal form, it just uses the bunny and the bunny becomes big, so that's what I was expecting. I didn't expect her to become giant and smash her with a butt just like that, so... I'm a little bit like, what was that sort of thing right now? Anyways, <laughs> this has been Michael with Senran Kangura Shinobi Versus. Obviously a really good game that's kind of more on the ridiculous side, and I enjoy that about it. The fan servicey stuff, not so much a fan of. But hey, it's a good game regardless, with a few small issues and a few gameplay balance stuff. But if you're not looking for, you know, a super in-depth game that has a lot of, you know, whatevers, it's an enjoyable experience, and I do recommend it to mostly everyone that enjoys action games. Anyways, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. 
for more content like this one and leave in the comments what you think of the game. Do you think the fan service ruins from it or do you think it adds to it? I really haven't done very many of these types of games, so I don't really know what people are going to think about that, but, you know, ultimately, I'm able to look past fan service and there's a few games I'm going to be looking at in the future that have fan service and so it doesn't necessarily bother me in this game. Now, if there was like straight up nudity and stuff like that, that might bother me a little bit because... I, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. I really don't know. Maybe I should play an extra game that actually has nudity because it would actually tell me whether or not I would actually care or not. Because ultimately, like, for this game, I don't... I don't really care because, you know, with turning off those scenes and stuff like that, it's very ignorable. Like, you know, just... Boom! I don't have clothes on, but that doesn't... That doesn't really matter. Like, I've been able to play through the game without ever even thinking about it, so... Yeah, it's not interruptive anyway, but, you know, not everyone likes that. And of course, you know, if you'd like to see more content of this game or anything like that or other games like this, make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments. And just as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bunny. Oh, right, I was going to do the whole end the video with the thing. There we go. Yep, I should end every video with that now. Just <laughs> so stupid.